so today we are talking about positive and negative space. Before we address what positive and negative space is, I want to first describe what space is. Obviously we use this word space all the time, often referring to outer space and the planets and solar system and all of that, but in art, space is something else. So it's one of the seven elements of art and it's referring to the emptiness or area between, around, above, below, or within objects. So here's an interesting, fun assignment to go ahead and do. Take a moment to pause the video and draw this. I'm not going to say anything about it other than draw this. Go ahead, press pause. Okay, hopefully you did take the time to draw that. What I want to know was, what did you see first? Did you see the faces? The faces or the candlestick slash face, whatever it is. What did you draw first? What did you color in the candlestick slash face, whatever it is? Or did you just outline it? If you want to see it again, there it is. You see now, maybe perhaps you haven't seen that yet, the faces as well as the vase. So positive space is the shapes or forms of interest, whereas negative space is referring to the empty space that's between the shapes or forms. So for this quick assignment, I don't want you to actually draw the objects. Instead, I would like for you to outline the negative shapes seen around the objects. So you can decide here if you want to include the cutting board as positive space or as negative space. I would go ahead and include the fabric that's the tablecloth. I would go ahead and just say that that's negative space. So just kind of treat all of that at least as negative space, um, including of course the wall behind it. And it's up to you if you want to include that cutting board as positive or negative space. And you can go ahead and pause this to do that. So hopefully you were able to successfully draw that. You might find that some of the shapes are a little bit off, right? Maybe that wine glass um, is a little bit too big or the stem is too skinny. That's kind of how this goes, right? So you're looking uh, at the negative space as well as the positive space to help make these decisions to be able to create it, but it's weird. And you might even have caught yourself kind of accidentally drawing the positive space instead of just looking at that shape that's created between the wine glass and the wine bottle, for example. But that's definitely what we want to do. And, you know, why is this important? Why is it important to really understand positive space and negative space? Um, I would say the main thing to me when I'm drawing or painting, it's great, it's a great tool, um, and it helps as kind of a way to just check your drawing, your angles, your sizes, etc. so you can look at the shapes that are created by the negative space. Now, if I have a couple different objects, it helps me, if I look at the shapes in between, then I know what um, the shapes of the objects should look like in terms of placement, um, in terms of angles and size and all of that. Because sometimes we think we know what something looks like because we're like, oh yeah, a coffee mug. I drink out a coffee mug every morning. I know what this looks like. And we fail to actually pay attention to the placement of the, pop, the coffee mug or the proportion of the coffee mug relative to the objects around it. So really paying attention to that negative space that surrounds the coffee mug and whatever else is around it is really a very, very helpful tool. So let's just take a look briefly at some famous works of art that utilize positive and negative space in a really unique way. So here's an artist that is a 3D artist, Beyond Art, and in his work we can see that not only is the positive space of the sculpture really unique, but so is the space that's created uh, around and through the positive space. MC Escher is an artist that many of you are probably familiar with. He creates these really unique uh, optical illusions and 
tessellations and this one is a tessellation that transforms into something else we start with a fish and we end with a duck so um, it's pretty unique here as you can see just that transformation that takes place of course positive space becoming the negative space Kara Walker is also another artist and I'm actually gonna go into a little bit more detail about her by checking out her website. So here's her website. So let's meet Kara Walker. Kara Walker is a contemporary New York based artist and she investigates race, gender, sexuality, and violence through these intricate, beautifully done, silhouetted figures, and she has been exhibited worldwide. Uh, she received her BFA at the Atlantic College of Art and then her MFA at Rhode Island School of Design. She's received many awards and has had so many exhibits uh, worldwide. And um, in her art, let's just take a look. This is her website, which is carawalkerstudio.com. And you can view all of her um, projects and um, works here. Took me a second there. And so we can see uh, the amazing intricate designs that she has. This piece was actually not a um, silhouetted uh, kind of picture, but these are some sculptures that are also quite impressive. Um, if we look at her work though, uh, we are able to see the really amazing work that she has done um, in the course of her career. In most of it, you can see that it's a silhouette kind of exploration, and so we see that balance of positive and negative space being used in a really unique way. So here, um, these are some great examples of her work. So I encourage you to check out her website. Again, it's carawalkerstudio.com. Henry Moore is another 3D artist that is taking a really unique approach to positive and negative space, again, by not only examining what the positive space is and just creating a really unique form there, but also looking at it, what do you see in, through, and around the, the, the sculpture itself. Henry Matisse is another artist that I wanted to take a moment to look at because not only is he known for um, a lot of his paintings, but he's also known for his little cutout collages. And so what he'll do is he'll cut out all these really unique shapes, and again, they just create a really nice, balanced, um, intricate kind of detail um, with that white background behind it. So for our art project today, we're going to be exploring positive and negative space, and you can be using pen and ink, marker, um, even just a regular pencil um, or charcoal. You could also even just do this with black and white paper and cut out the positive space and then whatever is remaining on your paper, flip it over, have kind of a mirror image and that will create your negative space as so. So you can also draw this. This is an, another just a great way of looking at the space around your uh, objects to help you uh, figure out placement and size and just really draw from observation rather than just drawing some kind of little loop as you can see here that I've done um, and then keep it kind of you know try to just instead of just drawing the loop that looks similar just really trying to get it to be very exact you can go as intricate as you'd like you can keep it abstract or you could draw it more representative like here I'm drawing a, a representational I should say I'm drawing a tree and then I will be drawing the uh, opposite with white okay or instead of drawing the white if you don't have a white pencil for example you could just draw that black space kind of around it so think about how you want to do this there's so many right ways that you can go about it whether it's with paper and kind of cutting everything out or drawing it with pencil drawing that positive first and then drawing 
the um, black space around it second. So there's a lot of right ways to do this. Just figure out what works best for you. Uh, you could also just go back to those studies with that vase face and draw the vase face again, but draw it um, in your own way and try that one more time or set up a still life and draw that negative space around it, therefore creating the positive space. Have fun.